Tattoos, and then Jill Jordan did a couple of tattoos years later. And I, I mean, they were like 35 and 40 years old, so the colour was out. And Kevin Quinn was a guy, we actually dated the same woman in the 80s, into the early 90s, several times. But he, was the first, <laughs> but he was the first musician that I knew who was a tattoo artist, he's a great, great guitar player. And, uh, he was the first guy I ever saw with full sleeves, like full Japanese where you had Ed stuff, it was just amazing shit. But, uh, excuse my language then. But, uh, so when I went to, I was like, you know, I should get these things recovered, it's all the red had disappeared out of one arm and stuff, it was kind of odd. I'm like, I'll get that, and Jill's not tattooing anymore. So I called Kevin and said, let's do it. So I guess I ended up going a little further than I thought I would. <laughs> it's, for me, it's the colours are so yeah. strong in on these. They're really yeah. vibrant colours. Well, he's, he's, he, he does traditional Japanese, always has. So the good news is, we see, the trouble is on television, since The Hangover, actually The Hangover 2, when they put um, Mike Tyson's tattoo on, I think, Ed Helms' face, and then the guy sued who did the artwork because it's done, it's, the artwork is not owned by Tyson, it's owned by the tattoo artist, mm. it's IP. So they, I think they had to sell for a million or two million or something to pay the guy. So then Warner Brothers, when I was doing uh, Supernatural, and I still had my tattoos, I was getting massaged on the table, so I'm seeing the way I got to cover him. I'm like, why would I have to cover him? So well, you have to get a waiver otherwise. Because I couldn't find my, I have to go find Lau and I have to go find. Jill, who was unattainable. Um, I was like, oh, screw it. So they, they covered it. And now I got to the stage where I went, like, it's one artist, and he signed a waiver. And so I'm going to do a walk of independence here. I should get to see my tattoos because they're contemporary from 1760 onwards. It's the same designs and traditions they've always had. God, it's a boring, bloody subject. <laughs> you know what they say? People with tattoos don't care about people without tattoos. Think about people with tattoos. What else? Oh. That was you. That was, it, was your only question. You took my next question, which was going to be how does, it, how does that affect your Walker Independence? And, uh, but uh, you answered the question, so there we go. Walker, who's seen Walker Independence? Who's nicked in down over it? You're not even trying, guys. What the hell's going on? I said better. Come. Walker Independence is the prequel to Walker Texas Rangers, set in what the 1870s, 1880s, and uh, it's good. 
it's very good and it's fun. So I've been in that from the beginning. They've got some, the CW's having some issues being in CW. It's all changed with all my discovery. So you never know where it might end up or move to or whatever. But we finished the first season. We only did 13 in the first season. We'll wait and see if we get a second season. And of course, Doom Patrol season four will start. So this is the end. So I expect you to be stealing that. <laughs> and you can go out and buy it when you love it. Who's seen Doom Patrol? Hey. Oh, that's pathetic. <laughs> Do you know who's in Doom Do you know Patrol? Do you actually know who's in Doom Patrol? <laughs> Brendan Fraser, Matt Bowman, Timothy Dalton, Diane Guerrero, uh, Michelle Gomez, uh, April Bowlby, Joanne Wade. I mean, it's it's an unbelievably good show. It's a ridiculously good show. We've been on for four years, and half the world hasn't seen it. So. It's like this kind of sent on tomorrow's, as they say. What do you want? What are you doing? You filming me? Uh, I like your blue glasses, very cool. So, what well, else? Hey, Phil. How you doing? Good. How's the weather down there? Lovely. Sure. Anything else? <laughs> well, we don't then. <laughs> I wouldn't have minded knowing uh, Brendan Fraser is as lovely as we all think he is. Oh, he's lovely, yeah. Uh, it's kind of amazing. So, Doom Patrol's the thing is they, they put him on Doom Patrol and he plays Robot Man on Doom Patrol Man. Uh, he's not in the costume. There's an actor called Riley Shannon who, is, who plays him, and they've actually went to the same school at different times, and about the same size. Very, very weird. And so I'm used to hearing Robot Man as Riley, and Brennan just replaces the voice of that and does, does all the flashbacks and stuff of steel. But uh, I think people watched it and went, oh, why isn't Brendan Fraser in everything? Because he's just wonderful. And if you haven't seen it, I, I implore you, watch the pilot and you'll go, I have no idea what this is about. <laughs> <laughs> oh, somebody's calling my name. <laughs> yeah, you don't have to go out, we don't care. We're all like kids, we're all big kids. <laughs> oh, that's not fun. People screaming at you. What else you want to know? I can't listen to you. You're not quiet. <laughs> Second morning. Mark walks into a room and everybody is tired. Everyone's like the best way they can do it. It's a big support. Come on, what do you want to know? Anyone got a question? What? Um, firstly, um, I just want to thank you for being a great job on Supernatural. Um, I was on Supernatural? <laughs> <laughs> um, That's 10 years of my life, I'm happy at that. First, um, I just get help with this. And I got them. I am one of them. Oh, good luck. It won't save you for me. <laughs> <laughs> no, so I don't have one of those. I struggle with mental health issues, and um, I got it from my mum that has demons don't me. Oh, well, that's me out of a job then. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just wanted to know the worst prank that Jensen. They never play pranks with me. What? I'm an adult. I'd sue. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I've seen tons of pranks they play with other people. That's why they wouldn't play pranks on me. <laughs> First of all, to address your interesting subject matter. First of all, I'm proud of you. Well done. I'm glad the fact that we finally get to be able to talk about this stuff without people turning off or, I don't know, maybe some people are getting bored with it, but it's a big, big deal. We're saying pretty much one in three people in England has some sort of um, mental issue, some sort going on, which doesn't surprise me in the slightest given the weather. <laughs> um, Seasonal affective disorder is pretty much that. But what it is is the themes of supernatural about family and, and sticking together and fighting together and good versus evil, the really simple stuff, sort of resonates with a lot more people than maybe even should. You know what I'm saying? And it's not, you know, we are not responsible for your mental health, as you know, but we're happy to be a part of your journey if we can encourage you and, and you know, by... Myself and my co stars talking about our own mental health issues, as we've always done. We never really shied away from any of it. <coughs> it's a lovely platform to have to say that, you know, these things are inclusive. When you think about it, you're a convention, right? Like, how many fights and stabbings do you see at a convention? <laughs> I remember in San Diego, so San Diego Comic Con, there's like 500,000 people at the height of San Diego Comic Con. 500,000 people are around San Diego Comic Con, 165,000 inside. The rest of them are in the streets. One incident that I know of. 
which is some boy stabbed another boy with a pencil in the hand over a girl that neither of them had met. <laughs> you could not get more conventional than that. <laughs> we tried. My heart goes out to them. They cried a lot. They shook hands, gave each other a hug, and it was over. That's literally the difference between a convention and the rest of the world. There's a lot of kindness here. There's a lot of... Uh, uh, God, I mean, inclusivity is such a stupidly touchy subject and such an uncomfortable subject for so many people. It's a bit overdone in the weirdest ways. But you do know that, you know, as you say, geeks have inherited the earth. And the truth of the matter is you can now go out dressed as you want to dress. My hair was orange when I was 12, 13 years old, and that made me strange. Having tattoos made me different and strange and a target of things. But hopefully your kid and other kids like it can go feel free to express themselves and find out who they are and what they want to be without pinning themselves down too much, I hope. But um, we encourage each other, we help each other. It's a very inclusive, a truly inclusive um, group, I think. And what we love about Supernatural is that all the causes that we've had over the years, with, we've got millions of fans, it's ridiculous. For a show that only had like three and a half, four million viewers, there's millions of fans all over the world. And everything we ever stood for or wanted to stand for, we should build hospitals and schools and incredible stuff. And um, we've all had our, our hands in, in trying to make the world a little bit better than we found it. But you not come in behind it and multiply that by a thousand. So if we, we're into something and we want to support something, it's incredible to see the amount of energy and money that can go behind that and make a difference, literally make a difference. It's not self-aggrandizing, it's, it's about putting it out to other people. So I think that's another one of the reasons why Supernatural is so popular, because it is inclusive and it's about, you know, surviving differences, I guess. But uh, don't ever forget, we did nothing, you did it. So you're here today because you did it. So next time you get to a point where you think you can't do it, you can remember my voice saying, bullshit, you did it. <laughs> so you've done it before, you can do it again, right? That's the way you do it. Thank you. You're with me when she's stepping up. That's me. Anyone else? Go on. Anyone? What do you want? What? Are you in season four of Doom Yes. <laughs> Did you not see the trailer? I can't know. Look at the, pull the trailer from uh, HBO or, or whatever. It's been talking over the whole trailer. So <laughs> obviously, I'm there. I'm immortal. I'm drunk. It's all the time. <laughs> Drunk Constantine is what it is. It's Constantine. It's because Grant wasn't allowed to put Constantine in, in Doom Patrol when he switched to those go comics. So he recreated it having watched Richard E. Grant in With Nail and I. So he put that as Willoughby Kipling, which is really Constantine. So me and Maggie Ryan have fights over who's the best Constantine. <laughs> Anyone else? Come on, be brave. Um, well, I find that's it then, go on. <laughs> what? Um, think about Supernatural, what's one of your favourite scenes? One of? Well, How many did you want? Just one. Just one? End of season eight? Yeah. End of season eight? Kind of. I don't in the church? Yeah, but in the church? Yeah. And at the end of that, the angels fall from the sky? Yeah. All that bit that goes up to the angels falling from the sky, that's my favourite bit. Yeah, me singing and getting injected with human blood. And it's kind of an amazing time to do that. We were very, very happy. Why is there a light shining in my face? Are you a burglar? <laughs> Anyone else? Oh, you lot at the back who want to hide. What shows do you watch? I watch all sorts of things. If it's fun or interesting. Um, you know what I just rewatched? watched uh, Cracker. Oh. So watching Robbie, I was going like, yeah, this is a pretty amazing show. I love Jimmy McGowan and stuff. It's such crap on telly, but I like watching good stuff. What? What do you want to know? You've gone quiet. You've got red hair, we can see you from the other side of the room. Come on. No, we're cute. Come on, ask me a question. Favourite season, I think, was eight. And the reason why eight was great, because uh, 
Supernatural was supposed to end in season five, right? So Kripke had this plan to do it, and then he left. And so Sarah Gamble had to come in and do season six and turn the whole thing around from an apocalypse. How the hell do you recover from an apocalypse? <laughs> That's an interesting writing concept. Sorry, not today. <laughs> Delivering milk. It's some type of uh, script, I don't know what it was, some bill or something, so I'm just having a bill, I don't want to go to it. So season six, which is actually really good, it's got some amazing episodes in it. She doesn't get enough credit for having Sarah Gamble. But um, Weekend at Bobby's is in there, and all those fun, fun episodes, French Mistakes in season six. It's great episodes. And, um, and then she did season seven, which is not a great season seven, but it would have been a really good season 12 with the um, Leviathans, that whole Leviathans thing. It was a little hard to take at that time to have something that's so serialized in the middle of a uh, sort of, there was a lot of Monster of the Week stuff going on at the time. And then Jeremy came back to the show, Jeremy Carver, who's actually, who runs Doom Patrol. Surprise, surprise. And he came back and went, oh, Angels and Demons. Let's go back to Angels and Demons and make it good. So I thought season eight was amazing. And season nine is, uh, season, the end of season nine is Team and Dean. That was pretty good. And then into 10, it's got a bit, mm, 11, where it didn't make any sense at all. I've done, a, I've done a scene at the end of season, either 10 or 11, I can't remember. I could really, they rolled into one at that point because it's all the same stuff. And uh, I was in a scene in a bar and I realised they hadn't bothered to write me any dialogue, but they put me in the scene. So I was sitting <laughs> at a bar and we were in a bar in out, outskirts of Vancouver and I found a giant bag of shell, pe- you know, peanuts in the shell. So if you watch that closely, you'll just see me build a pile of peanuts. <laughs> So I refuse to do nothing. <laughs> That's kind of fun. But yeah, a lot of fun to do. Anyone else? What? I didn't see it. No. <laughs> I didn't see the last episode. What? What's your favourite line from Alan Davis? Oh, God, what's yours? <laughs> see, you don't know what you're talking about. So you know. <laughs> I was just saying, there was a, a, a thing with San Francisco. It might have been San Francisco. Creation and somebody had passed out little paddles on sticks and each one it's like a hundred of them or something and each one had a different quote of mine from the series and I was walking about and I just gingerly put their paddles on <laughs> and I was walking around I'd forgotten something but I immediately knew the context of everything which is great the biggest one of course was no one in the history of torture has been tortured with torture like the torture you've been tortured with <laughs> which annoys me because it ends in a preposition um, <clears throat> so you're constantly thinking did I finish the sentence or are there more torches that I've been Where are you going? I'll put them back in the front of the scene. Oh, okay. Because I don't want a wheelchair. <laughs> they don't make anything compatible. You can go in the front. No, you can go there if you want. You've got the wheels, you can go wherever you like. Anyone else? Reese, you got anything? No, I was, I was just thinking as well, when you said you didn't like season 10 that much or the start of season, or the end of season 9. Season 10 started really good. I think I was getting more yeah. stuff. Yeah. With the, the little girl suddenly became bigger, faster. But, um, How did you get my exit from My exit from Supernatural? I was done. Stick a fork in me, I was done. I played the same scene five times in episode 12, basically. Poking Lucifer and going, oh, nothing's going to happen to me. So I went from being the smartest character on the show to the dumbest character on the show in about seven episodes. <laughs> it was just it was kind of pointless at that point. And they needed to do something new. It was time to do something different. So it was time for me to do something different. So I went on tour with Robin Hitchcock. You leave it now. You only just came in. <coughs> was it something I said? <laughs> sure. Big fan of season 10. <laughs> <laughs> Come back. <laughs> the main espresso. <laughs> Young Frankie Stone. Um, but yeah, XSX, I mean, it's, I remember it's my friends. It's people I worked nearly a decade with. They were all at my wedding. I mean, the entire crew was at my wedding on their week off in a foreign country. So we're all very, very close. I'm still close. I'm working for Jared now. That seems yeah. Which one? Ah, oh, you haven't seen nothing yet. Go watch Walker Independence. <laughs> Some tasty stuff. What do you think? It's pretty good, man. Did you like that episode? 
I, I, I me, mean, I haven't. No, I'm talking about Leslie. No, I'm talking about the organ grinder, not the monkey. <laughs> um, well, you do. He's better than Walker. I think so. What a lovely cast, too. It's a nice voice to look at, some nice girls to look at. Hey, Bar's pretty cute, isn't it? <laughs> well, uh, oh, I can't say the stuff I can't say. It's, <laughs> it's a new show, it's shot in 2.2 to 1, which it looks beautiful, it's cinematically beautiful. And the only sort of negative is if you're on the CW, the certain rules you have to follow on the CW, you don't have to follow on HBO or. I mean, the, the F word count on Doom Patrol is, is in the thousands at this point. <laughs> like season one, and the whole thing is, what the? You know, Brendan's right saying that. For, yes, we know. But, um, so there's, there's a sort of oddness to being on a channel that you can't smoke, drink, and be naked, but you can sort of allude to it, which is the odd thing. Whereas we're so used to British television after the watershed, it's like, oh. Everybody swears now. <laughs> Didn't used to be like that. I'm here in the sea world on television. I was like, wow. Everyone can say cat. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's, we'll see where we'll see where it goes. But I think I think it's a much loved show. The demographics are great. And the people are just so nice. It's just it was like the old love fest like, uh, It's freezing cold in the winter in New Mexico. It's a desert, it's freezing. I didn't realise that when I went there. Bloody cold. So when you were there, you should have told me. I was like, it's a desert, it's going to be hot. No, you won't. What? You all come to the UK. Steal it for God's sake, you have an internet thing. What's wrong with you? You're somewhere in an house. You'll find it. You're hungry for it. What do you want to know? Yeah, I'm lucky that. I'd rather be in Wrexham. <laughs> I miss Wrexham. What? Yeah. What would be your ideal role ever? No idea what my ideal role would be. I've played a lot of things I'd like to do, so it kind of makes me happy doing one yeah. It seems to be the things I really enjoy doing are the bits <coughs> you don't like as well, so it's kind of cool. It's worked out very well. But I've always enjoyed myself doing what I'm doing. And then when I haven't got something, and then I've watched it, I went, oh, that's the reason why I didn't get it, because I have a totally different idea of what it should have been than they did. But it's, uh, but the things that are special to me, like Battle Stars and Fireflies and those things, they're all hard one, make it fun. Anything else? Well, the back. Is there anything you think probably should have been I don't write fan fiction. <laughs> That's what Chuck was for. <laughs> See, Chuck was funny when he wasn't God. Yeah. A writer who thinks he's God is genius. But when you get like, oh, yeah, okay. I, I want a little bit more from my God. <laughs> I love Robin, That's not the point. What? I doubt if I could do it because I'm in a different property on HBO and. It's, it's hard to do. I can't be in everything. They asked her to go do it, but uh, we'll see how Gotham Knights turns out, see if Misha wants me to come play. So that'll be fun. See if the Young Winchesters are still on and stuff. You can always bring Crowley into the Young Winchesters. Where are you going? Yeah. <laughs> uh, where? You got one? Wow. Uh, yeah, what? Well, it's, it's an October meeting. It really is. You were the first one to give me a great name, Richard. Which is? You know it. Explain it to everybody else. Moose. So, well, I'm at Supernatural Conventions. Yes. What was your first nickname? I don't have one. Oh, I'll sue. <laughs> <laughs> like I told you. What's funny is, uh, let's put it this way Jensen's daughter's born on my birthday. My daughter's born on Jensen's birthday. And Jared has a son called Shep. <laughs> <laughs> kind of weird. I think Shep is the one who gives you that. Which is not good if you're a Blue Peter fan. Yeah. <laughs> it works out for us, but anyway. <laughs> See John Noakes say, Down with Shep. That's your business, isn't it? Yeah, it is your business. Anyone else? 
Oh, you're all excited, aren't you? Are you again? No, who are you? Yeah. Yeah. Um, some of my favourite scenes in Supernatural were with Crowley and Dean when they got their little romance going on. <laughs> um, I, I wanted to know, did you prefer doing those sorts of scenes where you were like nice Crowley or when you were not? I was never not nice Crowley. <laughs> How do you feel? I killed less people than the Winchesters. <laughs> God's sake, ter- you're as terrible you and my character. <laughs> it's just, it's everyone, it was just one of those people, if everyone just listened to him, it would have been a much better place. It's just what he said. I mean, you all know that feeling, right? Yeah. What? Well, Me? Yeah. Oh, I just want to say, I made you a gift. What? I made you a gift. You did what you gave me. I made uh, you maybe have told us two of your favourite episodes. Two of my favourite episodes. I love it. I love it. Do you know I broke the TARDIS when I did Dog's Day? <laughs> you know this door here? Yeah. It's got like, you know the, the you know the, the, what do you call the catches? that are like a little spring and they go into two little circular holes. Oh, you know that? You get them in, a, in a old kitchen cabinets. So that's what's holding that door on. I was playing with it and it broke. <laughs> Which was really sad. I got a funny look from the Welsh props man. So, don't do that, Mark. Well, Matt did keep breaking the sonic screwdriver, which was kind of funny. <coughs> Bloody jewel kept flying across the room. Tonight, like Matt, I've got it. I like it, that's really cool. Hang on to that for you. What else? Come on, entertain me. What? Who's your favourite celebrity, Jensen or Jared? Neither. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, Everyone thinks I'm sure. I'm not sure. <laughs> Guarantee I'm not sure. But standing next to them, I'm short. Because one's six five. Where are you going? Sorry. I have? Want a bet? <laughs> um, Jared's six five. And the little one is six two. <laughs> and Misha's over six foot. It's like, oh, and then every time they take a picture of me, they'd all go. <laughs> so I'm like five foot four. It's all right. Hey. <laughs> yeah, of course. I think if you don't have heroes, there's something wrong with you. There's got to be something wrong with you if you don't have passion for, for something. I've been starstruck many, many, many times. I met Peter and told her. I was introduced to Peter O'Toole in a pub by a casting director. And he said, oh, I love what you did in the name of the father. I'm like, <laughs> no one I could think of was a, hey, it's Lawrence of Arabia. <laughs> but yeah, often. I mean, I work with Timothy Dalton. He's like one of the most beautiful human beings on the planet. Sexy boy he is too. Well, that voice is just, ah, oh, Mark, come on. <laughs> And he's James Bond. <laughs> well, I'm not. I'm not done yet. He's not done. I'm not done yet. The next person is not standing up on that platform. I guarantee. <laughs> Go on. Next, give me a question. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay, uh, my characters. Yeah, you're like, you're not me. <laughs> you're <laughs> Don't pay any attention to those idiots. <laughs> I mean, what is it, 15 years of Misha not knowing anything beyond what he knew in the first episode? <laughs> Steve is smarter than Castiel. <laughs> Castiel's a dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> My favourite chocolate, it depends. Depends what mood I'm in. Depends what country I'm in. Depends what country I'm in. Two Belgian chocolates, please. But I, I, do, I do have a soft spot for dairy milk. It's simple. It really is simple when it works. Right, well, they're going to kick me out. Which is, go away, close the door. Make a noise. Listen, I love you lot very, very much. Any chance I get to, to travel and come and see my people makes me very, very, very happy. Well, oh, oh. well the trouble is, is she needs chocolate more than I do. <laughs> There you go, that'll keep it going for the next three hours. <laughs> Listen, you lot, you're very, very special to me. I wish we had more time.
come and say hi, come and do whatever you're going to go and do. And uh, as I said, I'll travel anywhere to see you. Uh, we make television in front of our friends. And we have no, you know, I come from a live audience. I come from music. I come from doing theatre. I come from being able to see your faces and actually being able to interact with you as I, I do what I do. And that's my favourite thing to do. I'm not much of a talker. <laughs> but um, to get to see your audience is the most joyous thing you can possibly imagine. So I will travel anywhere in the world where I have the opportunity to do so. I love you very, very much. I love Reese too, even though I don't mean talk very much. Um, but thank you, thank you, thank you. And it's a pleasure. Please show Mark how much we love him too. Absolutely. Thank you.